Come on. I'm scared of you. I'm the best. Hi, hi, hi. Uh, how's it going? Welcome back to our casual discussions. Sorry we are late with this episode. We've had a, quite a busy week, or maybe we're just lazy. But um, yeah, <laughs> as you can see, we've got four of the boys here. Hopefully the other two join us eventually. Uh, for this episode, we're looking at Iron Man 3. Probably one of the worst ones, arguably one of the worst. But at the same time, I don't know, I found it's very divisive in the MCU. It's the first installment into phase two, though. It's interesting. It's coming off Avengers, which is a pretty hard job to do. Uh, initial thoughts, guys. What do you think? Um, Was it rough? No, nah, okay. So Iron Man, as a character for me, besides, I'm not going to put Thor in the same category as them because he's, he's mighty. Um, but I'd say besides Thor, Iron Man is definitely my favourite Avenger, hands down. So I think coming off Avengers, which is such a big film i was expecting a lot so i th- i'm not going to say this film was horrible but i will say it didn't give me what i was expecting but i would go back and watch it you know what i mean like it's not horrible it's not like um captain america one horrible it's, um, it's not too bad i think um you know what i really liked about this film was just that one scene where he obviously doesn't have a suit so he has to sort of go to bunnings and grab his stuff and <laughs> well, I, don't, I don't know if it's bunnings in america but anyway, home, home depot yeah, and um, so yeah, he grabs a snitty, uh, a sausage sizzle on the way out. Um, <laughs> but um, no, no, I, like, I think a lot of people were sort of wanting to see what he could do without the suit, and I think it really shows us like he's got some skills, man. Like you know, if there wasn't aliens and monsters, he could kick some ass, you know. Um, so yeah, I thought I, I was going to say it wasn't a great film, but it was a good film. And that's Fair it. Enough. Yeah, um, well, since I'm the deep one, my first question is, what is Iron Man 3? No, I'm joking. We're not going <laughs> to <laughs> Let's talk about iron. <laughs> what is iron? What is man? <laughs> what is a man? Webster's, Webster's Dictionary defines... Oh, sorry. Oh, wow. What is three? <laughs> what is three? Is it a number? <laughs> <laughs> no. uh, this was an interesting time for me in the mcu because i remember when this movie was coming out at the time i was really into like you know the whole dark knight the gritty types so the trailer was very you know you see malibu beach house completely destroyed you see all these things happening you know i remember having friends saying oh i don't know how i feel about this movie because this looks like the first film where tony's going to lose so i was really pumped up for that and even the way they were going to portray the mandarin as more like a representation of like whatever um let's just say um universal threat that was around at that time that we were dealing with yeah. you know that all seemed very interesting to me um i do remember before i actually saw this film a few of my friends when they saw it messaging me like either say do not watch this movie or saying this is not the movie you expect mm. and I actually read the plot before I watched the movie and I was raging about the plot for a very long time. <laughs> and then I saw the movie and even though I enjoyed it, I struggled a lot with it, it as a film. But funnily enough, I've gone through a journey with it to at times really appreciating it and other times not enjoying it. But I think that comes with hindsight and learning where the director was coming from, where Marvel was coming from and understanding what was happening at the time with this film. You speak like you've watched this like 20 times. <laughs> I've watched it too many times. <laughs> yeah, I've watched journey it. with it. <laughs> I, think I even great, bought it. <laughs> great, great review, but... I think awesome. you said it when you said it was a struggle. Definitely a struggle with a movie. Um, for myself, as like our resident Iron Man fan, um, it, was, oh, it was horrible. My initial <laughs> view of it, I was just so disappointed. Like, you think, like, leading up to that, after Avengers, obviously, you're like, wow, that was awesome. And then you have all these promos for a movie coming out in Christmas, which was another thing. 
I thought was really excited for. And I, I, I thought we were going to get another chance to see Iron Man showcasing what he's got in a sense and like another good villain in this sense, which was like David said, they were showcasing the Mandarin as this, I guess this new terrorist threat in a way, which was I don't know, the thing at the time. But then you get whatever twists they went with in the movie. And then all the suits were kind of just gimmicks that were just thrown away. And then, Oh, a lot of the movie was just like, that was it. Like that's what got. <laughs> yeah. mm. but that was my initial feeling. But uh, we'll get into how I felt. On rewatch, I will say that I appreciate this movie a lot more than I appreciate number two. Because actually, number two, at the time it came out, I really loved. Because I just thought... I think I was just drawn to the, all the effects and the cool fights in it. I was just... Like, you hadn't seen Avengers yet. That's the thing. <laughs> yeah, exactly. There was no... There was a standard, but it wasn't as high. Justin Hammer was like the best villain ever. Yeah. <laughs> Malika, <laughs> do you even do you remember when you first saw this? Um, I haven't seen it since it came out, but right. the thing that the only thing that sticks with me is the mistake they made with the Mandarin. Yeah, and I think that's why I dislike this movie so much. Is that it could have had potential, it could yeah. have been awesome, and it could have opened up so much in the MCU. Mm. That, that little actor gimmick just completely wrecked it for me. Mm. And it's all I remember. Like watching Cinema Sins for it. Apes and it was like, oh yeah, that did happen in the movie. But it was just You're right. You know how we spoke America. about we spoke about Captain America two being quite grounded and not having aliens and all that in it. Yeah. They they did that perfectly. This one didn't really, you know what I mean? They they tried to go back to human villains and it didn't really pay off for them to be honest. Well, they bought something. They had the extremists. Like, that's some strange stuff. Mm. For yeah. To be, honest, to be honest, we what we went through back then, I think we're going through now, as in it was straight after Avengers, and we had no idea where they were going to go yeah. after. It's like, what can you do after this? So, yeah. It was like, it was like far from home back then, really. Yeah. I think uh, I wouldn't go that far, but... Yeah, just... yeah I'm saying that, like, <laughs> Iron Man... I guess Iron Man's a lot bigger character than Spider-Man, so... Yeah. yeah on yeah. the reels, maybe Far From Home should have been set before Endgame, but that was a Sony thing again. Um, obviously, continuation wouldn't make sense, but, like, I don't know. They could have worked around that somehow. I think they really enjoyed working on that whole replacing Tony Stark sort of theme they had going on. Yeah, oh, well... Well, I think it was the theme more of mentorship, you know? Carrying yeah. on towards some, something else that's not exactly Iron Man. I was begging when he put those glasses on to hear Tony Stark's voice, mm. but it didn't happen. <laughs> I think Mark, uh, pretty much said it. Like, this movie has potential. For <laughs> the original comic lines were with the Mandarin which is, and also um, with Extremis, two different storylines, which were interesting in the comics, but the way it was done in this movie was... <laughs> It wasn't delivered well. Actually, David knows about the original direction that this movie was going to go. I do. Mm. So, originally, uh, so originally, John Favreau, the director of the original two, was going to direct the movie. And then Happy. he wanted to go and direct uh, Magic Kingdom, you know, like the, you know, like the Disney characters, like a film about the Disney characters sort of thing. Mm. So, and then they brought on Shane Black. Now, Shane Black, Black if you know him, he directs very interesting type of movies. He directed The Nice Guys, a movie called Kiss Kiss Bang Bang. He directed The New Predator. And he's got a very distinct style in how he makes <coughs> his movies. He likes to kind of subvert genres. And mm. he approached this by saying he wanted to make like a spy thriller similar to like Winter Soldier. You know, like that whole like 80s, 70s type, you know, espionage film. And he wanted to focus more on Tony Stark, the man, rather than the whole yeah, yeah machine thing. I think that was his aim throughout actually the movie. So it wasn't so whether he achieved that or not is another question we'll get into. But yeah, it was that sort of a thing. Wow. Well, well there it goes back to that scene where he sort of broke into that mansion without his suit. Little things like that. Mm. Also the, Yeah, and the thing where, you know, Happy kind of left clues for Iron Man like you know how you had that thing where you had the holograms and then there was this, mm. he was doing a like detective work by trying to figure out what exactly happened in that massive explosion at the beginning? Yeah. 
I agree. But um, yeah, this movie was a bit of a mess. <laughs> I just um, feel like um, I just think it was a bit rushed. To be honest, it felt a little yeah. bit rushed to me. I felt like it was to me. It felt like a, it felt like a TV episode. And I was waiting for episode two and never got it. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Okay. Do you reckon? Yeah. Do you reckon it needed needed to happen, or were they just riding the Iron Man wave? There were de- I think it was a bit of. They were definitely riding the Iron Man wave. They were in a rush to get out a sequel for Robert Downey. Mm. But, but at the same time, I think it sets up well for Iron Man's mentality in Age of Ultron. And, you know, we have our own thoughts on that movie itself. But um, I really enjoyed Age of Ultron. I know maybe half this group didn't. But, one of my you know, favourites, man. Hey, I, need to, my I need to rewatch it. I'm pretty sure it's in my top ten. Mm. But, like, need to so- rewatch in saying that, like, I don't. I think the approach to the film, even though there's things I don't agree with it, the approach to the film I think works to me in the sense of like, again, the villain, the idea of Guy Pierce as the villain, Aldrich Killian. I think that's the approach of that was great. Even what originally I thought what the Mandarin was going to be was great. So th- there are a lot of good ideas they got in this film. Even like the whole thing about Tony, even him with dealing with his PTSD and trying to figure out where he belongs in it all. I think that works good. So I don't, going back to whether this film was necessary or not, I think the ideas in this film were good ideas to set up a film. It just, they wasn't executed. So I'll see it more as a problem of execution rather than original ideas. I don't know, but that's how I feel. The thing too, were they, were they setting up that young kid to be someone in the future too? Definitely, mm. I reckon. You know what I mean? Like this mm. film was necessary to introduce him as well, I guess. There was plans for, what was his name? Well, the actor's name Hartley or, Harley or something. But yeah. The, uh, th- that's why he's still in Endgame because I think before that they had something planned. I know they have Tom Holland now, who's the new, who's Spider Man with Iron Man Tech and all that. But there was definitely something they had planned for that kid because I think you know with Iron Man his whole thing is either get rid of the problem so he can retire or pass it on to the next generation, which mm-hmm. we saw the start of that with this kid. <coughs> yeah. Um, what was it- kidnap the president type movie anyway when you think about it that's what david was mentioning too like very um just like a normal trying to be like an i guess a normal action terrorist film i guess so yeah national national pressure there were yeah there were political yeah. things, right? like the roadie went from war machine to iron patriot in this yeah film, which yes. i think is is very forgettable but yeah, he has because he's yeah he goes back <laughs> to war machine pretty quick <laughs> but yeah, going on the political themes, it's like stuff like, say, the, re- the ending, where it's like, you know, they're going to have the president, you know, be killed in front of everyone to make, you know, to make it look like it's a political statement, but really it's not. They're just trying to gain power of the world and all that. And it's like, oh, those things are interesting themes. But then you have fire breathing people <laughs> that, that are fighting Iron Man suits. Like, that's what, where it loses me because it feels like they're trying to do, like, oh, yeah, political espionage, you know. This is all, you know, like the corporate, you know, businesses are controlling the government. You know, the terrorists of the world are actually proxies for, you know, Amer- America trying to take over the Middle East or well, whatever. But then that's all distracted with, hey, he breathes fire. Hey, the people, you know, re- get well, look like the human torch. And, you know, like just all. And I understand it's a comic book movie. But again, like you look at Winter Soldier, you still have those comic book elements happening. Mm. But yeah. you're still able to show those themes a lot better. Like it's not like they, they're able to combine them better. Yeah. Or well, yeah. this one was a bit either way. It's like, <laughs> yeah. yeah. I, I like he, he only breathes how... fire once. He never uses it again. Yeah. Who? Oh, yeah. That's yeah. true. I forgot. Yeah. <laughs> I feel mm. the only thing that held this movie together was Iron Man as a character, Tony Stark, because because he is that lovable character who. Obviously, he would have gained so many fans, obviously, from Avengers, like, sacrificing himself, da 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 If you didn't like Iron Man before Avengers, you would have loved him afterwards, guaranteed. Mm. I think he's pretty much the only... Because, uh, as I said, I don't like Pepper. That's just my personal vendetta. Um, <laughs> even though Happy doesn't have... A, I guess he has a role, but in terms of, like, screen time, not really. But I think I love the way they played off him. A yeah. side so I love the way they played off him for storyline. I think he was good in this one. Carried yeah, him, carried really? him. I thought he was a bit forced in this one. I'll be, I yeah. still liked him. I, I think found him a bit forced. Yeah. Some of his humor was definitely a bit forced. Um, 
I think I liked him more than Rhodey in this, though. Yeah, true. I like how he takes on that security guard role and gets real like defensive though, and stuff like that. Yeah. That's that classic Marvel humor that we all wanted to see. And he yeah, started the, the movie off well. So. This movie heads. does have some good humor, but it does have some good humor. Mm, yeah. at that. For so Robert Rob- Downey, it's very natural. Yeah. He's, he's oh, basically, yeah, he's the same in real life. <laughs> his interactions with the kid were funny. I, I thought they were pretty good. Yeah. Because <laughs> we're connected. <laughs> I love right. that. Um, so going back to what I was saying before about um, the original um, direction. So originally, apparently, they wanted. So if you guys remember, do you remember Maya Hansen? Probably don't remember her by name because she was not that great. Um, the girl who made Extremis. Yeah. So she was like the other girl type character. Yes. Who they yeah. killed? Is that one they killed off really quickly and randomly? Yeah, yeah. But she yeah. originally was supposed to be the bad guy, but oh. Robert Downey Jr. didn't feel having a, a female as a bad guy would work because it wouldn't sell toys or it wouldn't, you know, mark the film. So they so made Aldrich Killian, Guy Pierce, the bad guy. I read that it was Marvel that said that it wouldn't sell toys. Oh, I read it was Robert Downey Jr. So that's yeah. interesting. But yeah, how, did they, how did they not cop a massive sexist rant for that? <laughs> well, it was 20, At the time, 2013. It was 2013. So did Killian, <laughs> sell, <laughs> did Killian sell toys? They could have sold a different type of toy. Yeah, because he doubt, breathes fire. I <laughs> doubt he sold any more toys. <laughs> yeah, that's probably right. why they got him to breathe fire in that one scene. It's like, okay, if you breathe fire, then we can sell toys. If you're breathing fire, so yeah, they they wanted to do like a Godzilla style scene. <laughs> I, I think that that was apparently a um a what do you call it? A fan service to comic book fans or something? I don't know exactly what. I don't know if in I don't, I don't think in the extremists they breathe fire, but I know there's a character that, I don't know, it relates to that breathe fire or something. Fing Fang Foom or something like that. <laughs> I do <laughs> like the... Um... Fing Dragon. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, but like, I don't know. I think he has a tattoo <clears throat> that looks like, I don't know, I don't know. I do like the scene where he rescues everyone from the airplane. Now. I think that's pretty... That's a great scene. I love yeah, that, that scene. Was a good like, scene. I think that, that really... St- not, I'm not going to say it saved the movie, but it was just a really good addition that helped this movie be watchable, you know? It was actually no, one, one of the ones they put effort in because they actually got actual skydivers and like... Yeah, really, all that. It's really on the really bonus features, it. I think, of the DVD, I'm pretty sure. Mm, I yeah. saw the clip before I saw the movie and I was like, okay, I'm going to watch the movie because of this scene. Because yeah. like, it's just a really... And you know, it's funny, even though these are superhero movies, we don't see enough scenes of people getting saved, in my opinion. So having like a scene like that dedicated to Iron Man saving people, mm. it really... It was, yeah, I really liked how it was done. Is that the first time we saw him operate the suit without him being in it? Yeah, yeah. yeah remotely. So. Which obviously yeah. continues over to Spider-Man. First time remotely, yeah. 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 It would have been cool if... Oh, it wouldn't have worked. Imagine if he did the snap, but he wasn't in the suit. Like, he had the <laughs> thing on. It'd be yeah. a bit twist. <laughs> nah, that wouldn't work because the, the, the stones need to know, like, the feelings and stuff. Yeah, I'm just, I'm spitballing. <laughs> and again, I think it's that whole thing of like, you know how Iron Man's all like a suit of armor around the world. He's kind of like trying to avoid the fight where, you know, he actually has to be in the fight. Mm. Which even though, him. yeah, but even though before he actually was in the fight when he asked, when he's without the suit. So that's an interesting question in itself. Yeah. Mm. But like even... Peter calls him out on it. He's like, if you really cared, you'd be here right now. And then that scene after the boat, he's actually there. Are you saying he didn't care about those people on the plane? Yeah. <laughs> Potentially. <laughs> I, I don't know. It seems like he didn't care about this movie. Yeah. <laughs> what do you reckon that truck was made out of to completely dismantle his suit? <laughs> it, <laughs> it, it, that suit annoyed me so much, man. It's what... It's what, like, all the, as a fan, like, you would have been looking forward to, this suit that comes apart and comes together. But all it did was serve as an ongoing joke throughout the whole movie. It's different in the extreme storyline, isn't it? Isn't it more like, na- like nanomites or nano whatever? Or nanotech. nanotech. Yeah. yeah. In the story, he's trying to, because his response to, like, his thought response to how the suit responds is really slow. So by like injecting it, it makes it like a quicker, like almost like, like a human response because it's different in the comic book line. He's still developing the technology. Yeah. 
But in this one, they just have it. They he puts microchips in his hands, and you can control mm. it that way. Ooh. Well, we see the beginnings of the whole out of suit control in Avengers, where he puts the bracelets on and yeah. um, it operates itself, sort of like that's where you, it sort of builds up. But yeah. I think there's so much potential in this movie for all those suits he had made, and they I feel like just fluffed it big time. Blew it up. Blew them all. Yeah. Yeah, I like. Come on, man! Like, <laughs> but even <laughs> that, be possible, then come on. <laughs> but even that, like, this is a thing. I think when Marvel's still trying to figure out, like, you see at the end, they take the arc reactor out of him. He blows up all the suits. He's like, "That's it. I'm done being Iron Man." And then Age of Ultron comes, and it's like, it's like none of the film happened. Mm. It was like, "Oh yeah, I'm still That's going. Everything's when fine. it goes through that whole like he's sort of separated from Pepper because obviously she's obviously gotten upset that he's gone back to her. Yeah, yeah, true. Um, yeah, they did like a 180 on themselves. Well, he, he was sort of drawn to the scepter too, so he would have been like, he would have felt that. Yeah, yeah true. That, yeah. I thought of it more as though he was like a a um, a goal towards not being in the suit anymore by making Ultron. Yeah, okay, yeah. <laughs> but I would have just liked there to be a road between how he got from at the end of that movie he's just driving off and he's done with all the suits to he's in the middle of east germany or wherever they were i forgot right. where they were was mm. it <laughs> funny uh, it's Oi. where um what's his name's from uh flipping the guy from civil war um it's his country zemo where yeah. zemo's from yeah in the, in the movie sokovia sokovia yes oh, sokovia right. Oh, oh my god! I'm kind of embarrassed that I didn't remember that. Yeah, it's like the <laughs> Sokovia Accords. It's everything. Yeah. Um, what was my original point? I don't, I don't remember what I was. Oh, I said about. basically like Iron Man blowing up his suits leads to his mindset. In oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. I was saying I would have liked there to be more of a bridge, like to explain yeah. how do you go from I'm done with this to being in Sokovia fighting he, with the Avengers. Like, keep in mind, he would have seen. I'm assuming he would have seen or some sort of, he would have known about the events of Thor and um, Captain America as well. He would have watched that from a distance or seen that at some point, mm. surely. And he's probably seen all that and gone, I might have to get the suit back out. <laughs> yeah, okay, yeah. yeah. Why didn't, um, why didn't like, they help him in Iron Man 3? Well, why didn't he help Cap in... Yeah, the, well, yeah it's really... Yeah, but Iron Man 3 has the president in danger. Yeah. Surely well, Captain America oh, yeah. would respond for that. That's what well, Iron Patriot was for. You know, they did Iron do... Man and that during the whole Dark Elf invasion. Like, <laughs> I think it's a, whole... a pretty quick invasion, but if you don't really need that that much help, then why bother? Like, <laughs> my answer was always he needed he needed forty suits, so I think he needed help. My answer is always <laughs> everyone else has their own problems. Like yeah, Thor but... could have literally come in and destroyed every single villain in Iron Man in two seconds. <laughs> it had except, Iron Patriot, except though. Black Panther. He was just chilling in Wakanda. He didn't care. <laughs> Not, Mark, I'm surprised you don't actually like this movie because the Hulk's in it. Mm. Well, well, at the end. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like, so he kind of helped him in a way as he was being his therapist <laughs> after it all happened. I was going to say, like, that was it's the best. That, it's the best two minutes of the movie. That could have been what his bridge was towards because he was getting therapy from Bruce if it, if it helped at all. <laughs> well, I guess they were working on Ultron in the background too. I like I really getting, wanted, I he's getting Mark. therapy from Hulk. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah, I he's not even able to explore their relationship more too, but you didn't really get too deep into it. Yeah, it was another bit of a, a waste. Mm. Um, I find it interesting that this whole movie, because he has a little dialogue at the beginning about how we create our own demons. Yeah, it's essentially, him. I said it to Grant earlier, Mark, that he, it's it's his whole narration of the movie is him talking to Bruce about what happened <laughs> at the end. But, oh yeah. Like I, I struggle with that, like the whole thing about how, you know, it, that whole narration of he says, oh, you know, we start with something pure, we do it, like that whole thing. But take the girl, the Maya Hansen girl. So he has like a one night stand with her. He leaves her with, and then she gets reje rejected by him. And then she starts this whole thing. And then later on in the movie, like he see they meet each other again and she's confronting him about what he did to her and all different stuff. And he's throwing it back in her face saying, well, I get to wake up with a girl now who has a soul. <laughs> and I'm just like, like, he's trying to make out he's so great now. But I'm like, dude, you're trying to say, you screwed this girl over. And now you're trying to make out you're the better person bec because you're with someone that 
you reckon's better than her. Do you get what I'm saying? Like, you reckon it was the heat of the moment thing, or? Oh, no, I'm just saying it's the whole, whole idea of like him saying like, oh, you know, we create our own demons, like blaming her in the sense of like she went down this dark path and all that. But mm. it was Tony. It'll be like, <laughs> it'll uh, be well, like say you're cra- you know, some, some girl that you hurt down the, in the past comes yeah. back and it's like, you know, you did this to me and all that. But yeah, yeah, but I'm dating someone that's better than you now. <laughs> <laughs> and then it's like, oh, she's all screwed up and all that. It's like, you, you made her like that. <laughs> I think it was the realization afterwards though. That what he had said to me was probably not the right thing. Oh, explain. All right. So like he he said all this crap to us like oh, I'm 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 in a better position than you are. But he's at the end like the narration. His good dialogue at the beginning is what he's saying to the Bruce Banner at the end. It's because oh, yeah. so like uh, he's saying out of Maya, he's kind of created his own demon in a way. Oh, okay. So it's a re- relation to him. Yeah. Yeah, that makes sense. Uh, you know, he's also, he's moved on. She hasn't. So they've dealt with it differently, I guess. Mm. But, even but I guess so. he was the one doing the bad stuff. So, <laughs> yeah. Cheers. I sort of like the start of this movie. Cheers. I like the, I like the song at the start. Like, I'm blue. <laughs> oh, <laughs> How are doing? On? It, um, yeah, we just started. Jump in. <laughs> well, actually... <laughs> I'll, after I say this, I'll let Chan say his initial feels. That mm-hmm. scene at the start, because you see Jensen, and it's like, it's a, um, it's an Easter egg off of Iron Man 1 where he says he saw him at um, that place in Switzerland and how he gave like a, a, uh, a speech while he was drunk or something. Yeah. Yeah, and that's, that was where they met, that conference. <coughs> and that tongue-in-cheek of perhaps another <laughs> time? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> What did you think of Iron Man 3 when you first watched it? Or well, in, rewatch? In, well, I'll go to I'll get to rewatch in a second. Interestingly, I, I don't know if any of you knew this, but we I, when we got together to watch uh, it was at Robin's house. I think it was just me, Rob and Malika. Uh, I don't remember who else was there. We watched a bunch of James movies together. A bit late. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> to to get to get ready for um was it was it Endgame? Is that what it was? Yeah, because we watched, yeah, we watched okay. um yeah, 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 yeah okay. So that was the first time because we did we watch Iron Man three just me and you Zeta early that day. Yeah, we were like we were like where do we start and then we just decided on phase two. So that was the first time I'd ever watched it. Uh, inter- I literally didn't watch it at cinemas because I I don't know if it was just one of those ones where Marvel was pumping out all these movies and I just never watched it. And I guess because like when you get to Ultron and then after that, um, it didn't really matter at that point if you watched it. Um, mm. I think to be honest, I think this movie is more of still a wrap up of phase one than it is a, a part of phase two, if that makes sense, because I don't know what you guys have already mentioned, but like the amount of tie-ins that go back to the first Avengers movie for me is like pretty, pretty in depth. So for my initial like feels of, I, re- I rewatched it um, before we did this podcast. And I think that I actually really enjoyed it a lot more than I did the first time I watched it. I, I actually think I, I enjoyed it more than Iron Man 2 the first time I watched it. But this time I actually enjoyed it a lot. I think that like in this day and age, I think this movie had really, really intense um, like mental illness tones about it. Um, I don't know who, if you guys have mentioned that already, but like obviously Tony dealing with like the panic attacks and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, but like, I think it was actually dealt with really well. And I think that the way they delved into it um, w- was actually quite good. And I think a little bit of it was a bit tongue, tongue in cheek with him with the little boy. Like I think they, they could have gone into it even deeper than what they did, to be honest, like a little bit more serious. And maybe it could have affected him like a little bit more like going forward, which I think, I guess it does because we get to Endgame and he's like a little bit on edge with um, okay. him and Pepper, him and Pepper and their family and all that sort of stuff. Oh, yeah. But look, I think overall, I think that I liked it because of those serious elements. I think Iron Man as a, as a character development went to a different level with that stuff. Um, I actually think that, um, I think maybe the, the, the young kid being thrown in was a bit of a market employee. That's what I first thought. But in this second watch, I was like, he actually did a really good job. And I actually think um, Killian was actually not that bad of a villain. So on this watch, I was like, I think the first watch, I was a bit like, I could see what everyone was frustrated about with the whole, like, there's no real Mandarin. Uh, Killian's, like, taking that place and we don't like him as much. Give us a real Mandarin. But I actually think in this one, like, he was pretty evil. Like, I think he, he encapsulated 
Um, it was almost like an adult Marvel version of Syndrome with Mr. Incredible. Like, you know, those like whole, like that's what I kind of got out of it. Like it yeah. was a revenge plot. It was real simple, but um, like it worked. But I guess for an Iron Man storyline, it didn't do enough to like entice people to want to do more with the character later because we, mm. we didn't see an Iron Man 4 or we didn't see. Whereas if they'd done the real Mandarin, possibly, like who knows what we would have got. So, yeah, we, anyway, did mention, we did mention that it was rushed a little bit mm. in terms of some of the characters. But I think <clears throat> second watch for me, the reason I like the second watch better, I believe why most people is when you first watch it, you're expecting so much coming off Avengers. You watch mm. it now with no expectation. You're like, mm. okay, cool. I think that's why, every, obviously, the second watch is always going to be better because you're not watching it straight after Avengers. Mm. Like, did this yeah, movie, right. did this movie, was this the first, like, what was the timeline as far as after? I believe this okay. was the first installment. Was this yeah. the first one after, straight after? I don't know the, the, the timeline. Yeah, straight okay. after Avengers, yeah. yeah. And then done. Yeah, right. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, right. It was like massive anticipation. Like, mm. Yeah, right. Yeah, that's probably why it was a letdown on first watch. <laughs> Which is really weird for me, the fact that, like, looking back today, I was like, it's really odd knowing what we're all like now, going to see every Marvel movie, like, that I didn't watch it at the cinemas. Like, it's, a, it's just odd. Like, I, <laughs> I was watching it today being like, why did I... Like, there must have been a reason, but I can't remember why. We yeah, I didn't go this. see it either, yeah. Yeah, but I think I mean maybe that maybe that shows you how good of how good of a phase phase three was because there literally isn't a movie now that would come out for Marvel that like I probably wouldn't go and watch at some point in the cinema. Like it doesn't matter if it was like I'm that hyped for it or not. I'd probably just watch it because like it's out. Whereas mm. back then it was like you picked and choose. Yeah, I love Cap. I don't love Iron Man all that much. I'll go. I'll watch that when it comes out on DVD or something. Like it's just different. It's um. Mm. It actually made a billion box office yes like it profit, did yep. profit this movie yeah yes. really massive yes. budget was 200 million made 1.2 wow <laughs> i think it's budget. because that's it was the Downey jr effect and you coming off, off avengers but everyone's yeah. like first movie after avengers we're so pumped let's go see it um when chance we we touched on it a bit where you talked about his his kind of panic attacks and ptsd coming off avengers i think there's mixed mixed feelings as to that malika said like do people really care about that whereas i i'm all for it like i think it's great for iron man development leading into the thing but i uh, yeah i think you said it i think a lot of what happened in this movie takes away from that storyline again it, it, it you do see it and it's prominent in the panic attack <coughs> yeah it's just it's kind of it we see a slightly more extreme version of thor after infinity war mm. like he literally has massive yeah he goes to a dark place as well yeah so it's like i'm in times five like mm, he's yeah, got a weight he can't even list he can't he doesn't even want to hear the name then i was like i feel like they they took that's that was thor's character development yeah. too in a way but thor they just turned full humorous oh yeah, yeah. Oh, and, that's, and that's marvels it's mm. a bit of it's not a problem but they that's can't handle about. serious issues properly Mm. One thing I love about Iron Man is he just literally didn't like as much character development he's, as he had. To me, he stayed very the same through the whole thing, like humor wise and wit wise. Yeah. He's always got his quips. Yeah, exactly. He's always yeah. arrogant. He's always up for a smart ass comment. He is, man. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, th <laughs> I think going back to the whole panic attack thing, I think the first time you saw it, which is obviously when he first gets to Tennessee and he's with the. Um, He's with the boy. What's the boy's name? Remind me. I always, I always forget his name. Oh, um, he's Andrew, yeah. What's his name? Spider-Man Jr. Yeah. I don't know. It doesn't matter. Whatever his name. He's a little boy. Oh, a little boy. Oh, oh, yeah, that's it. Bucky. Yeah, it's Bucky. It's Bucky. It's Bucky <laughs> yeah. and it's, anyway, so when he's in the car with Bucky and he has a uh, Bucky, he has in the car with Harley. And he has that, <laughs> he has that first, uh, the first kind of panic attack. I think that one is like, oh, like it, it's serious, but then the kid, the humor of Harley kind of like, downplays it but then when he's driving in the car and harley's back at home with like jarvis and they're getting the suit ready and he like mentions the fact that the suit <clears throat> excuse me may not be charged and we see like him genuinely go into a panic it's like he pulls the car over um tony and he's like genuinely and i think they did well in that scene to show like trigger points of panic attacks so like they mean he it, like harley was like i didn't even mention uh new york and then like the fact that he said new york made it even worse and then it was just like 
So look, to be honest with you, I think that going back to that point, I think that if there was a real Mandarin, because parts of the panic attack started when he thought there was a real threat to his life again and like the threat yeah. to his family and all that stuff. So if the Mandarin had been real, the fact that it was Aldridge Killian and like that was someone that he had met before and really felt as though for the majority of this movie he could handle, um, I think it downplayed the mental illness side of it. Whereas if it was a, a proper threat villain to him, like what the real Mandarin would be, I think that would have made his panic attacks and mental illness like way more intense, which I think would have made this movie stand alone on its own way more. That's that's just my opinion. Yeah, on it, so. and adding on what Caleb was saying, I remember in the trailer, the Mandarin was a lot more <laughs> personal in how he was coming across. I remember it was like lines like saying, Mr. Stark, I'm going to offer you the choice. Do you want a better life or a meaningful death? Or, <laughs> like, everything he was saying was towards Tony. And I remember thinking, this is great. We have this personal villain that just is obsessed with, you know, getting under Tony's skin. But he gets to the movie and the Mandarin doesn't really care about Tony. You know, Tony, he doesn't, he's just not interested. Doesn't in even he's know after, who he is. He's, he's after the, pre- up. <laughs> yeah, he's, he's after the president. Like, yeah. So he doesn't feel personal at all. Mm. Like, yeah. Yeah, yeah you're right. But it obviously does become quite personal. Yeah. Yeah. Eventually. Well, uh, I think, again, that's where Pepper thrown in the mix. I think I talked about it with David earlier. It kind of takes away from... It. Like, it, that's how it got personal, because she she became a trophy. Well, this is between yeah. Killian and Iron Man. Which was very strange. The whole thing is like, oh, you're my trophy and all that. I was like, I don't know. Like, I feel like not... Putting feminism and female rights aside, it's just a very cliche of I'm kidnapping you because, you know, you're my trophy. Or, you're like the thing I'm dangling in front of. But the... She's leverage for him. Yeah, mm. but it would I would have liked it was a better reason why he was kidnapping her rather than just like the one that he's dangling in front of Tony going, ah, oh, look what I got, Tony. Like, you know, like, it was very... Yeah, yeah. Bugs Bunny-ish. <laughs> Sorry, it's a weird... <laughs> well, I never thought I would hear Bugs Bunny on this channel, man. I, I never thought... I would have gone, like, 60s Batman or something. Rush, <laughs> David. Went straight for Bugs Bunny. Just brought Looney Tunes into this. It's all over, bro. But he was, he was Indian last time, wasn't he? Yeah. Who? Yeah. No, Thor was Indian, yeah. All right. <laughs> oh. All right, the accent. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, man. oh, by the way, Caleb, just an update. How you feel about Jane Foster? I'm very similar about Pepper Potts. Really? Yeah, I can't <laughs> not, not as extreme. Either, right? I'm not going to say to your, your extreme, like, extreme, like galactic hate. Yeah, right. A more earth based hate. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, a little bit less. <laughs> yeah, I, I get, we can quote my I galactically hate Jane Foster. Actually, yeah. Sorry. <laughs> I galactically I was a bit hate that. I galactically hate Natalie Portman. Like, it goes further than just Jane Foster. Um, Wait, you know what? When she picks up that hammer, you're going to hate it. I know you are. You're going to cry. But, well, it belongs to Cap now. I don't know why she gets it. It's got nothing to do with it. It should be, go- it should be getting handed on with the shield. It I'm curious to know how, how she gets it, to be honest, how it comes back. That's another thing. Mjolnir finds her worthy. Um, I think Jane... <laughs> Mark's like, I find her worthy too. <laughs> Oh, we've, we've said it where there's potential with either the Mandarin storyline or the extremist storyline. Um, Guy Pierce, I think, pulled off... Like, on rewatch, you're able to look past the twist and I just kind of focus on what Killian was trying to do with AIM and extremists. Oh, what, well, what do we think about, about what he was doing with AIM and also Maya developing extremists and what it becomes? I just hope they do more with AIM. It has they have mm. such a big part in the comics and the animated series, etc. I really yeah. hope they bring them back and do something in a good movie with them. I'm so glad you've read all this stuff, Mark, because I got <laughs> no idea, bro. Like, not that, not not in a not even in a humorous way. I'm actually so glad you know all this because I know nothing about comics or anything. I really it's wish very, I it's very random bits of information. Yeah, I know. a lot of, a lot of time on your hands there. Because <laughs> I was reading the other day a, an article or whatever. Is, is, is it true that the rumors are with the potential the, the Shang Chi movie is is that they're looking at doing the Ten Rings and, and obviously um, the Mandarin and, and a proper version of that? Yeah, they're not um, doing justice in that. 
Yeah, which I think would be because it wasn't there something about the, the the ten rings or something like that. Have bought isn't there like a tie-in or something in the in the storyline so far where they've already bought some sort of tech or that like, didn't they get mentioned somewhere in one of the movies? I was reading yeah, the article. I, they were the stuff, villains. That I mean, yeah, like, yeah, no, no, I, I know that, but I mean, in one of the later movies, were there, the were there some involvement? Didn't they? They were in Ant Man. <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm. That's what is that's what Are I'm they? thinking of. Is that right? Yeah, was, yeah. So it was one of the people that were going to buy the Ant Man tech. Is that right? Yeah, they, yeah. Them and Hydra. Yeah, yeah. yeah and right, okay. supposedly, AIM is going to be in the new Black Widow, as mentioned. There's yeah, been cool. some Easter eggs. Yeah. Mm. Cool. When's that coming out? In November. Yeah. Mm. Hopefully. Yeah. Hopefully. Yeah. Remember that thing that I mentioned a couple of weeks ago on the podcast about the video that I watched of like why Tony is like a feared Avenger because he's got the continu- he continually grows. Resourceful. I think one. Of- yeah, yeah. One of the things that were in it, like I was saying, he built a like a suit for Spider Man that had a had a heater in it, whatever. Um, like I think Harley mentions to him, like, "Oh, you should have a suit that's like stealth mode or something, something like mm-hmm. that." And it's like, yeah. And it and then that comes up later in like another movie, like there's like a suit, a version of the suit that he builds. Um, so I was just think it's cool that yeah, it's just another Easter egg or a nod to the fact that. Like literally, it's every single time Iron Man's in a movie and something goes wrong for him, in another movie later we see that he fixes it. Um, <laughs> except for now, like he's dead. So unfortunately, yeah. okay. Spoiler. Coming off Avengers, it was the whole a suit that he could have anytime, anywhere, and you had the bracelet one, but you know it led into Mark Forty Two, but it kind of failed. He never built the reflector panel suit for invisibility. You never end up doing that. But the kid mentioned stealth mm-hmm. one. Yeah, that would have been pretty amazing. Like, um, when you think about it, can yeah. I ask a question? Can I ask a question, Zeta, as the Iron Man guy? Do you have like out of all the movies, like let's take not let's take comic books out of the equation for a second, like potential Iron Man suits in the comics out of the movies? What's your favorite Iron Man suit? The Civil War one, Mark. Yeah, sixty. Okay. Yeah, that one's pretty cool. Yeah, That's nice. the pop okay. vinyl I bought. It's the one I like most. Mark Forty Six. Cool. I just like yeah, the design yeah. and. Look of it, and also he beats beats Cap in a way. Mm. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> nah, that that was just a joke. But yeah, I, I like the look of that one. And yeah, so- I was just gonna say, and it was coming again. It, it, I kind of touched a bit on it before, but again, it comes back to the whole. I find it interesting about Aldrich. It's this I He does say in the film, he's like, you know, if you have someone like a Gaddafi or you know a Ben Laden or someone, you can mm. get away with every anything. And I like this idea of. You know the, these businessmen, these corporate men, the you know the American businessmen behind the scenes, using the people in the Middle East, the, using the war on terror as a way to cover what they really are trying to do, and mm. they're trying to use them as proxies. And that was an interesting idea behind it. <laughs> but but um, the thing was, and I said it before, that it all gets overshadowed um, by the final scene and the whole thing with extremists and all that. Yeah. So, yeah, I, mm. I do like the idea of what Aldrich could have been. At the same time, it gets a bit overcrowded because you see even in the first scene, you got Aldrich who is, you know, this crippled guy who Tony leaves on the roof. You got Maya who does the one-night stand with, and I don't know, did he screw over someone else? I don't, that's what I'm saying. There's so many people he's screwing over. It's hard to probably get Literally. invested into each one. Hey. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. So, like, even though, and I love Guy Pearce as an actor. I think he does a great job as portraying yeah. villains. I just feel they weren't, enti- they didn't entirely sit down like this is his direction. This is where we're going with it. So even at the end, when he's like, "I am the Mandarin," sure, that sort of makes sense. But by that point, it's like it's so all rushed and confused, and I don't know what's what. It's like, okay, you're you're the Mandarin. All right, why not? And Maybe then he gets killed. It's yeah, rough, so. definitely rushed. Maybe because he. Glows orange. He calls himself the Mandarin. <laughs> <laughs> oh my yeah, he's not. He's not the. He's not the comic book villain Mandarin. He's literally just saying, "I look like, like I go orange." <laughs> it was either orange or Mandarin. <laughs> I, think, yeah, like, I, I think to be honest, I think they should have just left that. Like that line should have been left out of the movie. Like I think if they, if Marvel, like Marvel is smart enough, and it's like they were far enough into their movie game to know, like we may want to use a proper Mandarin again. And it's like now, like if they do it, we're not going to be upset about it. But it's like in some ways, they've, they've, they've already got like some really key comic book people will be like, they've already said they've got a Mandarin. Like that, that was that was killing. Them. So it's like they should have just not said it. Yeah. Um, and I think going back to what you're saying, David, like that was that scene out of this movie was one of the best on the rewatch. Was him saying that speech to Tony about like when you left me on the roof, you gave me the greatest gift of all, which was like anonymity. Like I, I yeah. was anonymous, and that was like that was a really awesome line. 
Mm. And yeah. I think that's that's why like Zemo in like Civil War is one of my favorite villains because like he literally has no power. Yeah. Um, and he brings people to the brink of like destruction by being someone that's just whereas like I think in this by the fact that he, Killian was so evil, but like he still there was almost like two separate storylines to what he was doing. If he'd yeah. just been the person that was like trying to bring down, you know, and control the war on terror that he was saying, and that's yeah. all he wanted to do. And yeah. then he survived at the end of the movie. That yeah. would have, that would have shown me more about current society than what this movie did. Yeah, so if like, he like yeah. if he'd survived and got away, like not away with it, but like he was still alive, and yeah. there was some small repercussions, like he got like I don't know, he was in jail for a certain amount of time or something. Like he didn't yeah, yeah. die. I yeah. think that would have been like wow, like this is what real life is like. These people yeah. are evil, but then in like twenty years they're gonna get out of jail. Ten years they're gonna be like that. That's that's reality. So yeah, well even to yeah. the point. Where like at the end, where he's got the president, he's saying the whole things like you know, you allowed this these oil companies to ruin the sea and kill these you know what animal life, and then no one saw a day in court. And the president's like, "What do you want?" And he goes, "Oh, nothing. I just need an excuse to kill you." Like that yeah. was just that's incredible to me because it's just yeah, like just, it's so someone's just like, "I I just need an excuse. I just need to use something." And it's like this is very interesting on the, what the world is today. Mm. So yeah, he was just trying to save the seas. That's pretty much it. <laughs> he was an environment. That's, that's, that sums it up. <laughs> yeah, <that's>... a... <laughs> I like the uh, warrior. I've got, that a question. I've got a question for Chansey, actually. Yeah, go for it. came sort of late. We, I touched on before the scene where um, Iron Man breaks into the mansion using his own, obviously, his own skills and stuff. Do you think they're trying to push that more than just a suit theme in this film? Yeah, a little bit. I mean, that's that's why I'm going back to the car scene when he had the panic attack. Like, he had the panic attack because he realised that the suit wasn't going to be there for him. And there was kind of that nod. And it's going after Avengers because we had this big throwdown with Cap about, like, you know, take off the suit, what are you? All that sort of stuff. Um, so I think, yeah, that's... I think they're, they're trying to push that agenda a little bit. Um, to be honest, I don't think... Besides, like, as you go through the movies up until Endgame, I don't know if we get that much of it i mean we get a scene in in civil war where he's fighting hand-in-hand -hand combat but even then he has the arm on like he has like so like realistically he does a lot for society by the ends of the movies without his suit as far as like philanthropy as far as like helping people as far as you know whatever you want to look at it if you if you're an iron man fan but it's in civil as war as well yeah yeah but he doesn't yeah. do as much as far as like fighting like that, that's just whereas i think in this movie they were, they were pushing that agenda maybe a little too hard um it doesn't where that end scene is 40 yeah. um is 40 suits so that kind yeah. of blows yeah. that one straight yeah. out yeah. Ask because we, we touched it before i just wanted your opinion on it, that's all yeah it's like uh, it's like they're pushing this i'm i'm just as good without the suit but to win the final battle i need 40 suits like mm. it's like you could have surely there could have been other ways they like they like, could could have dealt with that or something like that I, yeah. I mean i don't know i don't know how you would have done it because technically it's like the fact that he's able to be, like I think Harley mentions the fact that he calls himself a mechanic and a mechanic builds which is yeah. also another nice line um, or so it's like yeah sorry yeah so if he's a mechanic that's not a superpower but it's also like the fact that we're getting back to he continually grows yeah. so that's what makes him a superpower a superhero so well yeah. like originally the film was supposed to end with him saying I am Tony Stark but Marvel said no you're saying I am Iron Man that's yeah. where I think where that scene was supposed to play more of a role. Mm. Mm. Right. I am Tony. He's more than just the suit. Yeah. Um, but just quickly, I want to touch on the most disappointing part of this whole film, which really ruined it for me. Mm. Pepper Potts survived. I thought she was dead. I was really happy. But she survived. So, yeah. yeah. That's... And then she gets a moment with, like, the suit, and she's like, oh, that was really violent. Yeah, I know. <laughs> See what I mean? Yeah. Anyway, she, I'm gonna go. She, but she's so um, much better. She's so much better in Infinity War and Endgame, in my opinion. Yeah, I agree with that. Like her, her character arc with Tony yeah. is so much better in those movies you than they are in all. Than they are in all three of the Iron Man's. I yeah, really liked true. her. I really liked her in Civil War, which was brilliant. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> planes, plane scene. Did anyone? I, I, I thought that was great. That scene. Wait, could he not there. have? Could he not have called a few more of the suits to help? Mate, you would have preferred if it was in space. Yeah, it would have been good. <laughs> yeah. Wait, so, so, in so, space. so, can I just ask a question on the, on the whole, like, suits question, like, more suits. Obviously, like, towards the end of the movie, he has a lot of suits. I get it. There's, like, 40 of them. When his house gets blown up in Malibu, wow. obviously, we know, 
we know Tony is like probably got about a thousand houses somewhere with a bunch of suits. But like, you'd imagine that a lot of suits would have got blown up in that. Like, like, do you know what I mean? Like a lot, a lot of, and he had a lot of stuff that he was working on. Like a lot of the newest uh, technology, as far as the suits are able to do the things they did, would they not have got destroyed in that scene? I've got to answer have... both your questions. Okay. Right. Thanks bro. I really appreciate it. Cause so, you know, I know nothing. Iron Man 3, the only thing he could control remotely at the time is the Mark 42, whatever it was, because that's the only yeah. thing he didn't plant it. So he couldn't, he couldn't really call on the other ones yet, I believe. Like, that was the only one he could control with the thing and whatever. Mm. And as for the other suits, they were deep within a vault underneath, like you see when it comes out. It's all underneath a really big vault. So you see all the old ones get destroyed, but as for those ones, it was very well protected. It's, um, so it's like an Iron Man cave. He kind of learned after the incident with Rhodey, where Rhodey takes the Mark II. Uh, I don't know if you guys have touched on this before with Rhodey, uh, before I jumped on. I could have I could have really done without the whole Iron Patriot nonsense. Really? Um, I prefer yeah. that to War Machine. Yeah. I actually was sad when they went back to War Machine. I yeah. prefer War, I prefer all War caps. Machine. War Machine rocks is, is probably my preferred. Um, I've changed all my passwords to War, War Machine rocks. If anyone wants to hack my bank account, it's just War Machine rocks uh, in, in numerical numbers. It's a long, it's a long pin. That's like 200 people hacking into your account. <laughs> I go for it. I thought Iron Patriot was boring. Like, Rhodey was boring in this movie to me. But, like, what did you like about it, David? Like, what did you think about it? <clears throat> um, look, I don't know. Like, I wasn't completely sold on the War Machine armor in Iron Man 2. Right. So, I like the idea of them giving a new aesthetic. Um, I like the idea. He had more of a purpose. Like, it was different. To, it wasn't just, oh, he's Iron Man with a big gun. It's like, no, he's an agent for the military. He's off, you know, on a mission from the government. Yeah, he's the response to the the whole thing. I like that whole aspect of it. Mm. And I even, like I said, I've said before, I like Terrence Howard better as um, Rhodey in War Machine. But I found Don Cheadle really showed it a lot more in this one because I actually believed he was a soldier. You know, right, I yeah, actually yeah. believed I like, even, that, yeah. even when he wasn't in the suit. And even I liked even having that whole buddy cop aspect that him and Tony had. So, mm. but yeah. Caleb, is the reason why you don't like the armor because it looks like Captain America, but it's not Captain America? <laughs> no, it looks like Captain Puerto Rico. Um, <laughs> no, I think, I think I just think it was just tacky. Like it's, it was like to be honest, I know I, I love even First Avenger, but it was a little bit First Avenger s. Like it was just tacky as far as what they did with it. Okay. I think I think maybe like Rhodey is not one of my favorite characters in the MCU. Like it's not mm -hmm. someone that I'd be like. I, I agree with you, David. I actually think um, Terrence is it Terrence Howard. Is that the first? Yeah, Rhodey? yeah, yeah. I prefer him. I think that he was better as, as, as the actual character. Mm. This is the reason for me, which kind of touched on it on the Cat podcast, why Sam Wilson is a better character than Rhodey. Like, I don't think Rhodey could stand alone in his own TV show with another character. Like, I, I don't think yeah. people would watch it. Uh, so I, I, so I, I think that's one of the reasons why as much as some people controversially love Sam Wilson or hate Sam Wilson, he's a better character than Rhodey. And for that reason, it's like... I. I didn't like hate him in this movie. It, I just don't think that. I think they put him in there for a reason, and I don't know that the movie needed that reason. Um, yeah. Because because they kind of if you're gonna have Rhodey take on that that older friend element of being there for him while he's going through his panic attacks and dealing with all the stuff with Pepper, you you I would have preferred getting more happy in in, in yeah. that role because no, we see that he's we see that he's capable of it in Spider Man's that he's capable yeah. of being that like confidant and i know it's more of a father figure for for, for peter but yeah. then like we didn't need harley to be as strong as what he was in the movie if we had more of Rhodey. i just think there was too yeah. many characters trying to fulfill that role for for tony yeah. whereas like they all kind of took away from each other that, that's that's yeah. what i did that's what it did but yeah. in comparison to the war machine armor because for <laughs> me i find the war machine armor just very bland like it's just a mm, silver yeah, with a big gun. but again it depends what you like so yeah, I do. I do agree. It is maybe a bit more tacky, and like, I think, yeah, the film was going for that. Yeah. But yeah, I think that's just the thing. Like when we went back to the War Machine armor, I just again, I was just like, oh, whatever, because to me, it, it's bland. Mm. But I think I think it served its purpose because obviously, if they had just changed it yeah. for this movie to be like a marketing ploy, I would have hated it more. But the yeah, fact that it yeah. served a purpose, whereas he was being used by Killian to, yeah. to do to do that by I yeah. Patriot being like, oh. He's gonna get close to the president and all that sort of stuff like that. Yeah. It, it at least served a purpose, which I think yeah, made more sense. And yeah. like it made it made sense in the movie, like they explained to change the name from War Machine because it's too like intense of like a yeah, name yeah. being alongside the president or whatever. Yeah, yeah. 
So anyway, it made sense. I just was like, to me, I'm not a huge fan of roadie, so maybe that's why I didn't love it. Yeah, hundred percent. Yeah, I like that. <clears throat> so in the th- in Iron Man two, Rhodey's suit, the War Machine suit was mostly done by Hammer Industries, mm. and then in this one, the design of Iron Patriot was mostly done by AIM, actually. So I like again that it's that theme again of Iron Man's kind of stuff being misused or something he's created been used in a way that he didn't really intend he didn't really intend for so i do Mm. like that aspect of when uh the well what's his name the bold extremist dude the security guy kind of takes it over and then it's kind of like it kidnaps the president and all that Mm. um outside of that though yeah i i wasn't too for it but yeah, you guys are pretty much already... It, it probably touches on you going back to the fact that it's like a misused version of the Iron Man technology, which I think is interesting because it's like maybe that's... Like most people, if you put it up being like, oh, which, which do you prefer, the Iron Man suit or the War Machine suit? Like they're going to be like the Iron Man suit because it's like way cooler. Mm. And in some ways it's like, I don't know if that was their intention, but it works because it's like it's, it's a second class version of what Iron Man is. And that's like, maybe that's a, a creative way of showing the fact that they've taken something that was so creative and so unique being Iron Man technology and yeah. tried to make a version of it themselves, but it's always going to be like a second grade version of it. <laughs> so yeah. in some ways when we view it, it's like, I, I don't think War Machine is anyone's favorite character in the MCU because he's a second grade Iron Man. And that's yeah. actually what they're maybe trying to put across. Um, like the, 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 where the technology came from. I'm not talking about Rhodey's interpretation of that or the actor's interpretation. I'm more speaking about the fact that he's another Iron Man, quote unquote, um, I think it's supposed to rub you up the wrong way. That's mine. That's mine. They should have. Way. They should have leaned more on the idea that Rhodey represents the military, and that's what they mm. never properly did because they kind of wanted to make it like, oh, you know, Iron Man and Rhodey together. But it's the same thing in Iron Man too. They didn't fully go for Rhodey's military. He represents what Iron Man would be if it was under, you know, the authority of the government. You know, blah blah blah. So. It's a little mm. bit done, but it's not done in a full yeah. way. Mm. Yeah. In this one, you see it when, they're, like at the end, when they're trying to rescue the president and he, t- he tells Iron Man to go have a look at how many enemies and he looks up really quickly and he's like, what'd you see? And he's like, uh, I, I, didn't, I didn't see anything. I did it too fast. <laughs> 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 and then Rhodey just goes straight up and just shoots out the lights. <laughs> yeah, true. Um, but yeah, not much, not much going for that storyline um how did you feel about the president like the whole political like the whole political aspect of it did it work for the film well have you ever seen a movie that isn't a real life biopic of a presidential actor that you've enjoyed the president in like i I, like i don't know there's many like i don't think i've ever seen a movie (laughs) where they've taken a fake president white house down jamie (laughs) fox yeah but that's just because of jamie like i don't think that's like but you know what I mean? Like, there's nothing like when it's when it's a White House like, down. Well, it's like they've tried they've tried to take the character of George Lipsist. W. Bush. They've taken George W. Bush and just gone. Yeah. How many actors can we look like George yes. W. Bush? Yes, a hundred percent. And put yeah. them in a role and just call it the president. Yeah, like, hundred percent. It. Stop doing it. It's so annoying. Yeah, yeah um, no, so I have to agree with that because I don't believe any of them are the president. That's why it's annoying. It's yeah. like the the minute a president it's like it happens in X Men movies all the time the minute a president is in a movie it's like an instant turn off for a movie you yeah. don't want to watch it anymore it's like yeah. this guy's clearly not the president so a side comment but I always I thought he was for some reason I thought he was just going to be bad because this guy's usually cast as a villain but the only other movie I've really seen him in, in is Die Hard two <laughs> yeah so for some reason I was just always waiting for when is the president going to turn bad. Well, you never really connect to the president, I find, because it's always like he's the perfect American, you know, we've got to save the country type. You, never, you can't connect to him as a person. He's yeah. the president. And we're, mm. us being Australian, it's even harder for us because <laughs> we have no affiliation. Oh, that's true, yeah. Maybe. Are you, yeah. T- are you telling me, David, that this actor and his role in the president was nothing like Scott Morrison? Is that what you're trying to tell me? Because I was picking up some oh, real yeah. ScoMo vibes. Oh, yeah, uh, yeah, he yeah, yeah. He wasn't playing <laughs> No, I could see. I, I could see Scott Morrison tied up in an Iron Man suit down at Wollongong Beach. Just... No, wait. Who was our prime minister back then? What year did it come out? Julia Gillard. Was it Gillard or Rudd? Probably. No, I think it was, uh, no, I think it was Gillard. Abbott? No, I think it was Gillard. Uh, it was I think Gillard, Abbott. maybe. Yeah. yeah, it was Gillard. I think. I think it was because I think I think Gillard Gillard came in when we were still in grade twelve, right? Oh, or was it the? 
Yeah, I think it's Gillard. Anyway. Wait, we, wait, we had three in 2013. What the hell? Well, we're yeah, not going to yeah, see her in the in our Iron Man suit anyway. Yeah, we've had how a lot have, of prime ministers. How did we have three prime ministers in the same year? <laughs> <laughs> that pretty much sounds like it. That's the question of the... Of the of the century. Basically. See, a bi a biopic about that is a movie I'd watch. <laughs> that, that's <laughs> a better movie. A we literally had now. three. We had Gillard, Rudd, and Abbott. <laughs> in one year. Yeah. <laughs> does that mean Gillard didn't? Does that mean Gillard didn't last long enough to get her like payment for the rest of her life? Because surely she wouldn't. No, I mean, I Rudd obviously. It, I think it's if you serve. If you're an, if you're an MP, you get your pension as your set sa- your salary is your pension until you die. Is that oh, Gillard right, yeah. in your background, Malika? Yeah, it is. <laughs> you should do that. You should have done that. Robin, can you edit that in for the rest of the video? Hey, K- hey, Rob, was, K. Rob was Prime Minister for 83 days. That's pretty hey, man. See if it's... <laughs> How do we get a talk about Australian politics? I don't know. Um. I was, I was going to say... So, oh, I was going to say the scene with... um. Because you're talking about how you, you thought the president was going to be evil. Yeah. The scene with, like, the vice president when he, like, is at Christmas dinner or something and goes over to his like disabled daughters like you know what I mean like where it showed that he was yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Game or whatever yeah, yeah, yeah. I was like this is so like X-Men last stand and it hurts me <laughs> cliche that that's like just like some some government figure who's like in with the evil people is doing it for a family member I was like this is like every X-Men movie ever and yeah. it's just like so typical well, I think need, like, it just didn't need it. Again, a lot of the things they made mistakes with here was done properly in Cap, where you had the guys going "Hail Hydra," like it worked in that movie. Which yeah, is- yeah, yeah, yeah. True. I mean, it didn't work. It didn't. That's one of the biggest problems I have for First Avenger. I didn't mention on the podcast was those like the Hail Hydras in that movie was so annoying. Yeah, but it fit. It fit. What is it? The yeah, it fit, the, it fit the time. The right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But right. yeah, <laughs> when, when they're getting shot with the gun and they're like. Ah! Up against the wall, and then <laughs> they say it. And what's his name? Zola. He's just like, uh, yeah, Hell Hydra. <laughs> yes, Hell Hydra. <laughs> oh my gosh. So, would you call? Because I know people that actually call this a Christmas movie, and that hurts me. Like, it's not a Christmas <laughs> movie, but like, there's people that do. It's like an actual thing. Uh... Like, I get. People, okay, if you call Die Hard a Christmas movie, you have to call this movie a Christmas movie. In Actually, some ways. I will say the trailers leading up to it made it We're very Christmassy. Christmas yeah, themed. And yeah, it was only the beginning because he just plays the Christmas, a Christmas song. Well, there was Christmas decorations at a lot of the parties. There was Christmas stuff in the diner, I think, when they went to Tennessee. There was like, it, like yeah. there was Christmas elements to the movie. Like he was right. having Christmas dinner, but it wasn't a Christmas it's movie. It's not a like. Christmas. Nah. <laughs> it's, yeah. it's, okay. it's the same argument with Die Hard, you know. It's, it's, just, yeah, yeah. it's just set during Christmas. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, we we, we kind of talked about Maya, how there was a potential... The reason they were going to go with her originally as a female villain... Hmm. But uh, Marvel or Robert Downey apparently said that it wouldn't sell toys. <laughs> That's why they chose not to go down that route. Um, do you guys think any anything much of her, like in regards to what kind of potential she could have had, or not really? Uh, I, forgot yeah. was, yeah, I forgot she was a human. <laughs> I think I would have preferred it if, if so. If they had done it in a Dark Knight Rises way, which was like it's you think it's Killian the whole time i don't know how they would have done this but you think okay like you think it's amanda in the whole time and oh, instead of killian being behind it it's um it's actually maya mm. so like and it's similar to dark Knight rises with with bane and and um with uh, uh, uh what's her name talia talia agul yeah talia, agul. yeah talia yeah. but i think if they had done that uh, like i wouldn't have enjoyed it as much but if they just gone with her as the villain from the beginning of a movie i think it would have like it would have been groundbreaking for marvel at the time yeah. Um, obviously now there's so many female characters and we have Captain Marvel and we have this, it's like, it wouldn't, it wouldn't be a big deal. Yeah. So like nobody would care or whatever, but I think back then that would have been a big statement for Iron Man to make as a movie, which is probably the reason why Daddy Jr. did that, to be honest. In the extremist storyline, I like to like, they just didn't make her straight up villain. They just said she was controversial where she thought she was doing something right, but people were dying mm-hmm. and she was just like, just who cares? Like, just do it. So it was more mm. like, rather than her as a villain, she was just controversial because she kind of just believed in what she was doing. Mm. So maybe there was potential there. But again, I think we said it, Peppa kind of took away because she was like kind of the girl in the middle of their relationship and whatever. 
Yeah, they, they really push Pepper in this movie, which I wasn't a huge fan of. Like, I I just don't think we needed the whole, oh, my God, Pepper's got extremists in her, and then she's, like, having this badass fighting scene at the end of the... I think we spoke about this either when I watched it at your house. Like, I was like, why is this in the movie? Like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, like, uh, like, I'm all for her and Endgame putting on the rescue suit and mm-hmm. going to town. Like, the, that's... Her character's developed to a point in that, in that stage where it's, like, she's had this, like, tension with Tony... Like, if, if the movie in this movie had been more of, which would be annoying, but more of, like, Tony, don't go out and fight, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. And then we see it in Infinity War again, and then in Endgame, she's come full circle, and she's like, okay, let's, let's go. Like, I'm ready yeah. to fight. Like, I'd be down for that. And then if that happened later in movies, like, I don't think it will, because I think that Gwyneth Paltrow's contract is done, and I don't think she cares anymore. Yeah. But if it did happen further, and she was part of some part of some girl team that was fighting, or something else, I literally wouldn't care anymore, because it's like, it worked well in that movie. But yeah. in this movie, I was like, "Stop it!" We don't it was completely. It. it was out of character, completely. Mm-hmm. Um, Appar- I don't really know too much about it, but apparently there was uh, casting choice, and the storyline they went with for Mandarin was to avoid racial issues from the original Mandarin storyline. Oh, so they didn't want to use like a, a Chinese uh, actor or, or storyline. Yeah, and I read yeah, something right. like because they wanted to film some scenes in China or something. So that's potentially why they went down the route they did with um, casting and the twist. But now they're mm. doing the whole Shang Chi thing. So it's, just, it's well, it's probably a large Disney thing. Like I know I was reading an article about the whole Shang Chi thing with Disney <coughs> and like and Mulan and all that stuff. Like how mm. there was issues with I think that the actor actress from Mulan put up like a thing on her social media about Hong Kong and all that sort of stuff, and then mm. like there was heaps of issues with because like. The, there was a lot of money being pushed from China into that Mulan, Mulan movie. So it's like, I think that, I don't know if in 2013, Disney was ready to make a movie that had a lot of Chinese interest from it. And I don't know they'd done enough test markets to know that it would actually pay off. So like yeah. a character like that. Whereas I think that they know now that, um, not being controversial with it, but a racially diverse actor and movie being what Black Panther became, like does work in the universe. And yeah. I think that really did green light what Shang Chi will probably eventually become. Mm-hmm. So it's kind of like um, it's almost like I don't know the behind the scenes, but it's almost like the producer of this movie or director really wanted um, the Mandarin to be the villain. Uh, and Disney came back with this is how you're going to make it work. And I don't know whether they were happy about that, but they made it work. Yeah. Does that make sense? Because I think there was like that was that was the clear you know right storyline for what tony was going through as a character arc but it didn't work because i think maybe i think production made changes to the overall product definitely so, yeah. mm. you probably know more than what we do do you know of any potential if they were to make it iron man for what storyline like before obviously what's happened to him now but like it was there anything in the works of what storyline they wanted to go with or it was just there was no rumors of that at all i'm not sure nothing i've seen yeah okay. points to and but anyway i think out of that anyway i think he served well enough in the avengers sequels and captain america se- sequels to be a prominent role to consider it almost an iron man movie so yeah true true that's true he was in a lot of scenes in civil war like it like it literally was in the same as what cap was in pretty much so mm, and infinity war and end game as to what storyline i don't know but I think just with the Mandarin thing, I think maybe, again, that's where it points to the fact that maybe they could have just done without it in this movie rather than doing a poor portrayal of it and making it a humor, humoristic twist in a way. Just just scrap it and just focus on the extremist storyline or whatever rather than this big twist they were going for. Because mm. we have that Marvel... Is it what's it, the Marvel one shot? Is it those things that tell us about the fact that... Mm, King's when it, when he's in prison and stuff and he's actually like... Yeah. yeah. There is like an actual Mandarin out there or something. Is that, is that basically what it... I haven't seen it for a long time. Is that basically what it tells us? Yeah, yeah I think... There's a Mandarin out there or something. Yeah, and I think one of their targets in the movie is a rumour. is like they're going to go for Kingsley's character because of what he did to the Mandarin name or something. Yeah, right. Gonna, okay. So I have a feeling it, it might fix some things about the Mandarin, this Shang-Chi movie coming up. Yeah, because it makes sense that Killian, as a, a somewhat creator of Kingsley's Mandarin, would have, you assume, had to hear that name or that yeah, fable yeah. from somewhere. Like, it's not like he's created this. It's almost like he's heard a fable story of this person who's out there and he's, like, created his version of it to yeah. bring fear and stuff. So, 
Yeah, I don't know. I think it'd be interesting to see what happens with it. But I think, yeah, they just rushed it a little bit in this movie. And um, in some ways, like, I don't know, I guess if they didn't put it in, we could be here talking about how the fact that Iron Man had no star power. They should have just done the Mandarin. And like, you, you know what I mean? It's kind of like hindsight's twenty twenty. So mm. who knows what we would be doing if, if they had just gone with Killian and that's all they did. I don't know if there's much more else to go on. Should we cap it off there? You guys got anything? I don't think so. I think that, I, like I said, I, like I said, I think I enjoyed. I actually enjoyed this movie a lot more rewatching it. Um, I think it's one that a lot of people won't watch. Like that's just what it. This movie is one that if people have never watched. So let's go back to Grant with Courtney. Like she's going through a complete Marvel rewatch or, or first time watch for some time. Like it's highly possible that these sort of movies that people will just skip because they're kind of like, um, and it really. Well, it really depends on if you've never seen any of the Marvel movies before. Mm. Iron Man 1 is like genuinely a good movie. Iron Man 2, this is a problem with Iron Man 3. I think it's better than Iron Man 2, but once mm. you watch Iron Man 2, there's not much reason to watch Iron Man 3. But that, right. that's the problem with it. So it's kind of like if I had never watched it and I got to Iron Man 2 and I was kind of like, what more could I... Especially when I know he's going to be in other movies later. Like what more... Uh, unless you're literally being like vigilant about sitting down and watching it in release order like you probably a lot of people will just skip this movie which i think is not like you should watch it i think mm. if anyone's listening and you haven't watched this movie it's it's worth watching more so for his character development like that's that's the reason you should watch this movie i think um it, it depends what you're looking for in this if you're re-watching and you're trying to skip certain movies you could go ahead and just skip out on all of phase two if you want um, mm. <laughs> to to understand what's leading into Infinity War and Endgame, which is where, where most people are trying to go. But I think because Civil War is such a huge movie and what goes on between Cap and Tony is such a huge deal in Endgame, that's where this movie serves, along with the Iron Man sequels and the Captain America sequels, because their development is like a pretty huge crux of where Marvel's going. I think Thor, Thor is pretty high up there in regards to storyline, but those two and him have been what, the MCU is focused on for their main. Unfortunately, Hulk is supposed to be one of them, I think, but they just, I don't know, they just didn't really do much with him. Is his contract still going? Like, do we know if Mark Ruffalo's contract is still going? I, I read rumours that um, they're interested, or he, they're in talks of another Hulk movie or something. Um, yeah, right. I read a really weird article the other day about like, I look, there's no way, shape or form I think this is actually going to happen. But the, the idea of it is really interesting to me. It was like the, the fact that in the MCU, because he's alongside so many heroes, Hulk's full potential can't really be unlocked because like it, there's no need for it to be. Whereas like yeah. if, he was a, if he was a villain, like if it was almost like a civil war element to him as a villain going up against the Avengers, like he would be so beast mode that like it would literally nearly be unstoppable because... Yeah. He'd have to unleash yeah. all of his force, yeah. The only chance that they'd have to do it is if they they sort of screwed up World War Hulk with Thor yeah. Ragnarok, so that can't really happen. But the only other way they could do it is if it was a time skip, because then you've got future Imperfect Hulk, um, Maestro, and yeah, right. just be his ruthless. Or if they go into... Doctor Strange and they have they open up the portal of the multiverses and stuff, which is a very yeah. high possibility. Yeah. You could have a bunch of things that occur and they'd be yeah. I mean who knows? But um yeah, like I think just to end on that, Zeta, you're talking about the fact of his development and all that stuff and, and one of the reasons to watch this movie. I think once you get to Civil War, I I enjoy Civil War more because of this movie, because I think that this movie in comparison to say Winter Soldier with Cap Winter Soldier has got Black Widow. I mean, sorry, Cap has got Black Widow, has got Sam, has eventually got Bucky kind of back, back towards the end of it and then in Civil War. Iron Man's going through all the stuff he's going through in this movie for the most part on his own. Mm -hmm. So I think that plays into, like, in his mental psyche, <coughs> he's going through everything that he goes through and he's, like, bottling and bottling and bottling it in yeah. rather than, like, dealing with it with people. So yeah. I think by the time he gets to even Ultron, like, this, this actually means more for me for Ultron because I'm like, you're just, like, trying to fix the world's problems because you're so messed up. Yeah. Um, and the only way literally you can do it in the end is to do the snap and to reset everything for everyone else and die himself. So it's, that's kind of like a build up of his psyche. Yeah. So I and think that's into, why this, yeah. Build into those new Avengers like Spider-Man and whatever this Harley kid's going to be. Yeah. 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 Right. Yeah.
if if anything. Um, I will say though, yeah, it's interesting because at the end of this, he was talking to Banner. So essentially, this whole movie is a narration of him going to therapy and telling Banner exactly what happened in Iron Man Three. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, which yeah, I, I said it before. To, to be fair, you know, in Avengers, I reckon <laughs> they were. Like Banner and, and Tony's relationship is actually quite strong. I don't really mm. see it a- anywhere going forward with that. I mean, I know he's gone for like Banner leaves for a big chunk of that of that period, um, and we see him in Ragnarok. But like, we don't really see them be like 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 close. Do you know, what I mean? like yeah. in, in like in Ultron when we get there, then I wouldn't say they're close. Yeah. Like I think Hulk. I think Banner just becomes um, oh, so suspicious of everyone. Yeah. After right. getting rocketed into space. I think Hulk, the Hulk himself, just puts a lot of suspicion into him. Mm. Mm. But yeah, outside yeah. of yeah, sorry. Oh, I was just gonna say, and like that, you, and that's why the like the relationships all start to falter mm. slightly. Yeah. I think it's served well, like what they've done already together in the MCU served well enough. Like yeah. as as two scientists trying to fix whatever issue they're trying to fix, whether that's time travel or just trying to find the cube. Mm. Mm. Yeah, I mean, look, when you get to Endgame, it's probably a little bit better. Mm. Um, but obviously, in Infinity War, all we get is the, them, them them fighting at the beginning of that movie when he kind of like, like him and Doctor Strange are like, Banner, get out of the way. You can't do anything because <laughs> you're not turning into Hulk. So, like, I think maybe maybe it just plays into more of what they were going for with that storyline. So, mm. yeah. Anyway, overall, I think this movie is okay. I think it got a lot of hate when it came out, like a lot of hate. I mean, obviously, it made a lot. I think it made a lot of money more for the time frame that it came out, obviously being a holiday movie, mm. um, you know, school holidays, Christmas break for Americans. Like it obviously probably added to the fact that it made a billion dollars, but yeah, yeah, I don't know. It's not a bad sit down on the couch and watch that movie. If you've watched number one and two, that's, that's yep. my opinion on it. So I find the reason it's gotten the respect it has is just from rewatch, because I think Grant said it expectations coming into it would have played a big part into what we were thinking coming into the movie. And uh, yeah, you just have to watch Iron Man two to realize this movie's pretty good. <laughs> yeah, that's true. But you are, you actually hear a lot more people. You do, you, it's true, but you hear a lot more people from their cinema experience enjoying Iron Man two more than this movie. Oh yeah, um, yeah, for sure. I love. But it. I think, but I think that's just because you like there was so at that point, like it, it's obviously more of a momentum train now. But yeah. at that point, that was the first real, uh, you know, studio momentum train we'd ever seen. So by the time we got to Iron Man 2, we were like, holy crap, these, all these movies are good. And it, yeah. it didn't matter whether you loved them or not, that they were all just good. Yeah. So I think that maybe the end when you got to, like it pinnacled and peaked with Avengers and you're like, wow, no movie is ever going to be better than this movie. And then you <laughs> went into Iron Man 3 and you're like, okay, this isn't as good as Avengers. And I think that's <laughs> exactly right. That's, that's what it came down to. And realistically, were they ever going to be better than Avengers? No way. So it yeah. wouldn't matter what they did. So, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, there's only so far you can go when you go from a movie about aliens to a movie about not aliens. <laughs> hate humans that hate up. Uh, uh-huh. Final final rating and thought for the movies. Movie. Do you want me to go first? I don't know. Yeah, you're going. Uh, I'm in three. Um, as a, I'm going to stick with my original thought. Great. It wasn't great, but it was good. It was good enough. Um, and rating, I'm going to have to put it, I'm going to give it like a 6.8. <laughs> That's pretty good. Oh, yeah. uh, I've got so many other movies to rate in this podcast that I want to be, <laughs> I want to be putting it where I think it's going to be compared to future movies. <laughs> That's more than what I, I, I put it as a 6.3. Okay. Um, a lot of potential for different storylines. It's just, they were put all in this one movie and not delivered in any shape, way, or form, in a good way. <laughs> so, yeah, 6.3. <laughs> Beautiful. I'll go 5.5. What was what? that? 5.5. My rating. <laughs> well, I like, I like Dark World more than it. Bro, so I, I rate the like Dark rate World. <laughs> <laughs> I, yeah. This movie just doesn't do it for me. If it didn't exist in the MCU, I wouldn't be affected. I remember we're talking to a guy who puts Winter Soldier as 12. So. <laughs> that needs to be po- pointed out. Yeah, I've true. already told you guys that I like cosmic fantasy elements. So. Yeah, true. true That's true. why you yeah. hear my rating for, for Doctor Strange. Um, oh my god. I like true. 
but yeah, that, that's my rating for it, five and a half. Yeah. David. Um, yeah, I'm going to put it at six. Um, I see the film as, like I said, this is probably one of the earliest times where they got a experimental director to try and make a Marvel film, but there was still, they weren't, they weren't, they hadn't fully figured out the whole how it was going to gel with Marvel, how it was going to fit into the whole cinematic universe. <clears throat> yeah, they haven't figured, they hadn't figured all that out yet and what it was going to look like. So, uh, props for that. So, I give it a six out of ten. Cheers. Mm, I think if I had, I think if I'd watched this at the cinemas, I think he'd be getting a lower score. But because I didn't, maybe like I didn't go into it and go, I paid fifteen dollars for this and <laughs> bought bought a twenty three dollar popcorn and it like has to show up to my expectations. So I think my first watch of it, I would give it like a six point, like a six point four out of ten, which is actually not that bad because I I enjoyed it. But it's got a Christmas Carol in it, and some may call this a Christmas movie. So for that reason, I'm giving it a six point seven. <laughs> yes. All there's right. a Dwight. There's a Dwight Yoakam song in this movie <laughs> that you just need to listen to. Okay. When he walks into the bar, it's playing. Keep mm. in mind. Okay. I think Classic. It's Awesome for you. Alright, yeah, um, that was good. Alright, thanks for watching. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Can I just say though, I feel like I've been so nice now giving it a six point eight, but I think <laughs> what took it from a six point five to six eight is that Paris is the whole out of the plane scene. I reckon that's one of the like most amazing scenes I love it. And I respect that scene.